All right, partial fraction decomposition. That's what we're doing in written problem six here. Everyone's favorite part of math 252. That's not really true. Um, the idea with this problem is really partial fraction decomposition doesn't start until step two. And I don't even ask you the question in step two. I say, start out with the answer from step one. So there's kind of this step just to come up with the question upon which you'll use partial fraction decomposition. You might be like, what are you doing? Like, why'd you do that? The idea is hopefully it'll give you a little bit more understanding about what's going on here if we kind of go back and forth between the answer and the question from partial fraction decomposition. At any rate, I start you out with one over x plus two plus two x plus three over x squared plus nine. I start you out with this, and what I ask you is to write this as a single fraction. And what you need to know to write this as a single fraction is you kind of need a common denominator. And so the common denominator in this case will just be the product of these two denominators. So x squared plus nine times x plus two. So to make this term have that common denominator, I need another x plus two, but I can't just go putting it down here on the bottom. I have to multiply it by the top and the bottom of this fraction. Kind of think about I'm multiplying by one because x plus two over x plus two is just one. So that won't change the value of this fraction, but it'll write it in a different form, namely with the least common denominator between these two terms. So now this one's all fixed, but I gotta do something similar over here. Well, over here, I'm missing x squared plus nine. So I'll take x squared plus nine and I'll multiply that by the top and the bottom of this fraction. And after I do a little bit of algebra, what I'll see here is I have an expression that has a common denominator and can be written as a second degree polynomial divided by a third degree polynomial. And so what you recognize now is that since you have the same denominator, you can just add up the numerators. You can say I got x squared plus nine, unnecessary parentheses if it makes it easier for you to see, plus two x plus three times x plus two, whatever that is. And that entire sum is divided by whatever I get when I multiply x plus two and x squared plus nine, that common denominator that I have in both of the fractions. So now, since the question asked me to write this as a second degree polynomial divided by a third degree polynomial, I can just multiply things out and then collect like terms. So not much to do over here. The x squared plus nine times the one is just x squared plus nine. But over here, I got two x times x gives me two x squared. And then 2x times 2 gives me 4x, but 3 times x gives me 3 more x, so a total of 7x. And then 3 times 2 gives me 6. And then down in the denominator, x squared times x gives me x to the third power. x squared times 2 is 2x squared. x times 9 is 9x. And 9 times 2 is 18. Uh, so 2x squared and x gives me 3x squared. And then 7x is my only linear term. And then 9 and 6 gives me 15. So maybe that's what we'd call step one. And again, note, this is the type of question that you'd start out with. Actually, I wouldn't even start you out with this. I'd give you the factored form of the denominator. But this is as bad as a problem can look. This is kind of what like some of the homework problems look like. So step two says, all right, take that answer that you got from step one, this thing right here, and use partial fraction decomposition to rewrite it as this thing, what I have written here in green. Right? It must be true that this is equal to what I have written in green because I just showed that what I started out with in green was equal to this thing. So that's what we do in step two. So I'll begin step two just by copying what I ended up with in step one. And then for my first step, and I guess this is a little bit tricky here, you have to factor the denominator. And it's not easy to factor the denominator. There's ways you can do it. You could factor this by grouping. Um, but rather than even think about how we could factor this, you could just kind of be clever and be like, well, the denominator came from x plus two times x squared plus nine. So it must factor as x plus two times x squared plus nine. So I don't know if that's cheating or not, but you could rewrite the denominator like this because we've already proven that those two things are equal to each other. And the advantage of writing it this way is now we can use partial fraction decomposition. And the way you use partial fraction decomposition is you rewrite this as a sum of two different terms. And the denominators for the fractions that make up those two terms are the things that you just came up with in your factorization. So what I'm saying is I'll have an x plus two over here and an x squared plus nine over here. And note, I didn't even say it, but I guess I should have. This x squared plus nine is done. You can't factor that any further. That's what I'm getting at here with this x squared plus nine being an irreducible quadratic. At any rate, we recognize that since this is a linear factor, we can just throw an a up top. But since this is a quadratic factor, we need a bx plus c over here. And the logic is, this thing on the left is going to be the same as this thing on the right, but this thing on the right will be something that we can deal with. We know what it's going to be. It's going to be this thing in green when we have to do the calculus that's involved in step three. 
And so how do you get here? Well, think about if I took this equation and I multiplied both sides of the equation by the denominators. So if I multiply both sides of the equation by x plus two times x squared plus nine, that x squared plus two times x squared plus nine would be in the numerator here. So it would cancel out with the x plus two and x squared plus nine here. So I'd be left with three x squared plus seven x plus 15. And then on the right side, that x plus two times x squared plus nine has to hit each of these two terms. And so the x plus twos will cancel in this first one, and I'll be left with a times x squared plus nine. And the x squared plus nines will cancel in this second one, and so I'll be left with x plus two times bx plus c. And now I have this equation, which I'll eventually use to solve for a, b, and c. It's a little bit hard to do it in the form it's currently written in. So what I typically tell people to do is to get rid of all the parentheses. So over here, it's easy to get rid of the parentheses. I'd get ax squared plus 9a. Over here, it's a little bit more challenging to get rid of the parentheses. I have to FOIL. So x times bx gives me bx squared. x times c gives me cx. 2 times bx gives me maybe 2bx. And 2 times c gives me 2c. And what I can now do is equate the different coefficients. I can look at the x squared terms. And on the left-hand side of the equation, I have a 3. But on the right side of the equation, I have ax squared plus bx squared. So 3 must be equal to the a plus the b in order for me to have the same amount of x squareds on both sides. Then I got to look at the x's. And over on the left, I got a 7 in front of my x as my coefficient. On the right, let's see if we can find terms with x's in them. It looks like there's two of them. There's this one where the coefficient is a c, and there's this one where the coefficient is 2b. So what that tells me is 7 is equal to 2b plus c. And then finally, I can look at my constant terms. And on the left-hand side of the equation, I got a 15. And on the right-hand side of the equation, I got 9a plus 2c. And this part's a little bit tricky, so I'm going to later write a hint to talk you through how to do this. Um, because it's not super easy to solve this list, this system of linear equations. There's lots of ways you can do it. There's a way much more efficient than what I'm going to show you right now. But I think the easiest way that I can show you that I can write instructions for will be to take one of these equations, like this top one here, let's say, and solve it for b. So I can solve this for b by just subtracting a from both sides of the equation and saying b is 3 minus a. And the advantage of doing that is then I can take this equation and instead of writing the letter b, I can write 3 minus a. So this equation changes into 7 equals 2 times. And then instead of writing b, I'll write 3 minus a plus c. And you're like, how does that help at all? Well, if I rewrite this as 7 equals 6 minus 2a plus c by taking the 2 and distributing it through, and then subtracting 6 from both sides, I have 1 equals negative 2a plus c. And what you see now is that I have two equations, this third one and this one, and both of these equations involve a's and c's. So I can solve this equation for one of my two variables. It doesn't matter which one. c might be easier. I can say c equals 1 plus 2a. And then I can plug that in over here and say, all right, 15 must be equal to 9a plus 2 times. And then instead of writing C, I'll write 1 plus 2A. And the advantage of this is it only involves one variable, the letter A. So I can solve it for A. 15 is 9A plus 2 plus 4A. So 9A and 4A gives me 13A. And 15 minus 2 gives me 13. So A is just equal to 1 here. And once I know that A is equal to 1, I can plug that in over here and get that C equals 1 plus 2A. So C equals 1 plus 2. It looks like C is equal to 3. And once I know A and C are 1 and 3 respectively, I can solve for B. Here's an easy equation to use. B is just 3 minus A. So if A is 1, I get that B equals 2. So now that we have these values for A, B, and C respectively, 1, 2, and 3, that's easy to remember. I can come over here and say that this is equal to, instead of A over X plus 2, I could say it's 1 over X plus 2. And then instead of BX plus C over X squared plus 9, I could say it's 2x plus 3 over x squared plus 9. And I'll throw a big check mark there because I kind of knew that was the, what the answer was going to be because that's what I started out with in green over here, which I turned into the stuff in red, which was the stuff in blue, which has to be the same as the stuff in green. All right, maybe that color coding is overkill. It's pretty hard, but that's harder than anything you should expect to be tested on with partial fraction decomposition. And now we still have step three to do. For step three, we want to find the integral of this thing that we came up with here, one over x plus two, plus two x plus three over x squared plus nine, dx. And the trick for doing this 
is to think about it as a bunch of different integrals of the integral of, of 1 over x plus 2 dx, that'll be an easy one, plus the integral of 2x over x squared plus 9 dx. That one won't be too bad. That one can be done with the u substitution. And then plus the integral of 3 over x squared plus 9, and that one will be a little bit harder. We want to take this and break it up into two different fractions. For this first one, the antiderivative is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2. That one works out pretty nicely. If you want to do a u substitution where u is x plus 2, you can do that, but I don't even think you need to. You can probably just see the steps at this point. For this second one, it's going to work out really nice. Probably should write out the u substitution steps. You're going to let u be the whole bottom here. So u is x squared plus 9. And the nice thing about that is if u is x squared plus 9, then du is 2x dx. So the 2x and the dx will all go away and turn into a du, and you'll just be left with 1 over u. And the antiderivative of 1 over u, well, that's easy. It's just the natural log of the absolute value of u. And u was the x squared plus 9. What I'm saying is this antiderivative goes fairly smoothly as well. It's this one that ends up being kind of the challenging one, so much so that maybe I'll do it down at the bottom here. So what I first want to do is recognize that that 3 is just a constant. I can pull it out in front. So I got 3 times 1 over x squared plus 9. And then what I want to do is recognize that I wish that wasn't a 9. I wish it was a 1. Because if it was a 1, then my life would be way easier because x squared plus 1 is just the derivative of arctangent of x. So I'm going to factor out a 9 to turn this into a 1. But you've got to factor out a 9 from all the stuff down in the bottom here. So factoring out a 9 from the bottom is the same as factoring out 1 9th from the fraction. So I'm going to pull out a 1 9th and put that out in front of the integral, which is this 1 9th right here. And then x squared plus 9 will turn into 1 9th x squared plus 1. And that gets me here. And now I'm going to go one step further before I do my u substitution. First, 3 times 1 9th, that's just a third. Um, but I don't like this 1 9th times x squared. I'm going to rewrite that as one third x, and then the entire thing squared. And the reason I want to do this is I want it to be set up for a u substitution. I'm going to let u be this one third x. So if u is one third x, then du is one third dx. In other words, three du is equal to dx. So we can take this guy over to here and say we still have the one third out in front. I'm going to change the dx that I forgot to write right here into 3 du. The 3, I'll bring it out in front of the integral. So I'll have a 1 third times a 3. And then what I'll have left behind is 1 over u squared plus 1 du. And the nice thing about this is the 1 third and the 3 just cancel each other out. And then 1 over u squared plus 1 is just the arctangent of u. But u is equal to 1 third x. So this is the arctangent of 1 third x. And I guess I could tack on my plus c if I wanted. And this ends up going up here as part of my final answer. Remember, we were just working on this part of the problem down here. This was all sort of side work to figure out this integral. But that gives us the final answer that we wanted. Kind of a messy looking written problem. Yours might end up looking better than this one. Um, but hopefully there's enough stuff on here that you can follow it. And we'll call this good.